Greetings, and welcome to the MTI FX Advisor Charting Tutorial Archive. The intent of this archive is to maximize your potential as a trader by knowing how to best utilize the charting software that you use on a daily basis. In this series of videos, we will cover a range of topics pertaining to your MTI 4.0 software and its functionality. In this specific video, we will cover the introduction to the MTI 4.0 and the basic features and functions of your software. And getting started, let's start with the login box of your MTI 4.0. I'd like to point out a few features of this login box. First off, the MTI username and password should be labeled as you see in the center of this box. Next, on the right hand side you see the live feed data source and the drop down for your two live feed options. Your default setting is the iTradeFX data source. You also have the option to use Data2 as a secondary data source. The next thing that I'd like to cover is the serial number you see listed or highlighted below. The serial number is a 16 digit set of numbers and letters starting with F and ending in J. This serial number is unique per computer and should be written or logged anytime you use the Forex tech support for uh, technical assistance. This will enable them to help you in a uh, uh, quicker, easier manner. Next thing I'd like to point out is the number that you see down here on the bottom which is the MTI live feed version and the MTI charting version. The most current as of 10 9 of 08 is 476 on the bottom left and 482J directly to the right of that. Now that we've finished with the login box, I'd like to point out the different settings between your connection status. Your connection status you can see on the bottom right hand corner of your software. Here we see it in green. Green notifies us that we are getting live data and that we are connected to the internet. Should you see red where this green bar is, that would let you know that you are either not getting live data or you are not connected to the internet. Also, at some, uh, in some cases, you may see this as white. Normally, that lets you know that you're not connected to the internet or the MTI data server is down, signifying that it's potentially or most likely the weekend when the servers are not, no longer running. Now that we've covered that subject, I'd like to move on to how to create a chart. The f first off, there's a few different ways of creating a chart. I want to get started with the easiest and quickest way of doing so. The fastest way to create a new chart would be to click File and New Chart or hit Control W. When you've done so, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down, select your desired currency pair, which in this case I will use the GBP USD. In the own period, you're going to type in the time frame of which you'd like each candle to represent. In this case, I would like each candle to represent 60 minutes of data. The next and highest period should be checked as D and W, marking vertical daily and weekly grid lines. Once you've completed these three steps, you then click OK, and you should see the chart open in the background. In most cases, it will take between three and ten seconds for the data load for your new chart. And once you've got your chart created, you can either maximize your chart or tile it so that it's aligned, uh, it's aligned on the screen. The next thing I'd like to point out is how to delete a chart and you do so by simply clicking the X arrow or the X uh, close button at the upper right hand corner of the chart. Should you accidentally click the X option at the upper right hand corner of the software, you'll be prompted if you'd like to exit from the MPI 4.0. If you would like to, you would then click OK. If not, you can click Cancel to uh, get back into the software. Next thing that I'd like to show you is how to organize your charts on the screen. Firstly, we'll need to open up a few charts. I'm going to open a Euro USD chart. 60 minute time frame, a GBP USD chart, also 60 minute time frame, Swiss franc, and the Japanese yen. Once you've got all four charts open, give just a few minutes for these charts to populate and collect the data. Once you can confirm 
that the data has been collected and is ready to move forward, what you can do is click Window and Tile up at the top of your software. What this will do is this will organize the charts on your screen side by side so that they are not cascaded, nor are they hiding each other. You also have the option to cascade these charts, as we saw them previously, to tile them horizontally, which is the same with four charts, or vertically. In this case, I'd like to go ahead and make them uh, back the way they originally were. <laughs> now, another thing that you can do, if you would like the euro to be on the top left, the pound to be to the right of that, the Swiss on the bottom right, and the yen on the bottom left, or I'm sorry, the, bottom, the Swiss on the bottom left, and the yen on the bottom right, what you need to do is click the charts in order from bottom right to top left. What I mean by that is if you'd like the euro to be on the top left, this will be the last chart we click. In this case, I want the yen on the bottom right, so I'll click that first. I want the Swiss franc to be to the left of that, and the GBP to be above that. So I'm going to click GBP next, Swiss franc then will come next, and then finally the euro USD. Now once I click Window and Tile again, it's going to organize these exactly how I wanted them. Euro, followed by GBP, followed by Swiss franc, and finally the US Yen. The next thing that I'd like to show you is how to create a new page. First off, you have to click Page up at the top of your software. Once you have the Pages box opened, you're going to click Page, and then Save Page As. We're going to title this page as the MTI Entry Page. Once you've finished typing in this box, you're going to click OK, and you should see your title directly here in the center. Now let's test our page. To ensure that the page has worked, remove all the charts that you had open previously, and then open your new page yet again. This should bring up the charts exactly as you left them. Next, I'd like to show you a basic introduction to how to use your drawing tools. For this uh, point of demonstration, I'm going to maximize the GBP USD chart and show you how to use your drawing tools on the left-hand side as well as some on the right. Firstly, we're going to use the price line tool. In order to use this tool, what you're going to do is click the price line tool, and then you'll click and drag that to your desired price. Once you let go of the tool, the line will no longer be on the chart, thus giving it the name price line. Once you've found your desired price, you let go and the line will be released from the page. If you'd like a line to stay on the page, you have to use the horizontal line tool, which is similar. When you use the horizontal, horizontal line tool, once again you're going to click on the chart and then drag it to its desired position. Once you let go, however, it will then stick to the chart and can be used as a reference for, for either support or resistance, a trading channel, or, uh, noting, or marking out your AB boundaries. <coughs> Next tool that I would like to show is the vertical line tool. This can help you to separate days, it can help you to separate different periods in time, and basically just gives you an uh, opportunity to separate different portions of the chart to your advantage. The next drawing tool that I will show you will be the trend line tool. The trend line tool is used when looking to create or mark out the variations of different trends. In this case, what you do is again click the trend line tool on the left hand side. Once you've done so, you're going to click from point A to point B and release. In this case, I have my trend line tool defaulted to a thicker option, so we're going to edit that to change the options on here once again. I like my trend lines to be at a line thickness of 2, and I will again save that as the default. Here, now we can see the trend line on the chart, and we can go back and draw as many trend lines as we feel we need. If you don't want the trend line to be extended to the end of the chart, you simply uncheck or check the box that says extended when right-clicking on the trend line. 
The next thing that I'd like to show you is how to edit the different drawing tools. On the screen, we have a horizontal line and a trend line. Firstly, to edit the horizontal line, what you do is right click on the line and you have a few options here. You can color the line, which will in turn give you an option of creating different colors or, uh, for memorization uh, reasons. You can change the thickness of the specific line. I'd like to change it to a line thickness of five, let's say. That will make the line a bit thicker. You can also change it back. And you can also link this with another chart uh, if you're using uh, the same chart or a different currency. The next thing that I'd like to show you in this demonstration is how to use the circle tool on the left hand side of your software yet again. To use the circle tool you simply click, click the circle icon on the bottom left then click use and you're going to click and drag to make the circle bigger or smaller. Once again, click the circle tool and then click and drag to make it to your desired uh, size. Let's get rid of uh, some of these tools on the chart to make some room for the retracement tool. Next, I would like to show you how to use the Fibonacci Retracement and Extension tool. First of all, you need to find and mark your AB boundary as listed in the UTP. Next, once you have found your AB boundary, you're going to click the Fibonacci tool on the right hand side, select Use, and then you're going to click and drag that Fibonacci tool from your A to your B. The Fibonacci tool gives you examples as to where your extensions and retracements will be found on the chart. Here we have a 618 pullback, and in turn we look to find the 1.618 D extension. As you can see, the colors of my retracement tool are not the default setting uh, for reasons of synchronizing the 86 with the 1.18, the 786 with the 1.27, and the 618, 50, and 382 all with the 1.618. If you'd like to do this to your, your uh, retracement tool as well, you're going to click the retracement tool on the right hand side and then select parameters. In this parameters box, you'll see I have different colors for the 786 matching up with the 1.27, the 86 with the 1.18, and the 382, 50, and 618 all going to the uh, 618 and 1.618. If you'd like to make these changes, please click on the box, select the desired colors, and then click OK. Once you have finished, you're going to click Apply, and that will apply those settings to your specific chart. That's all for this specific video. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video, and hopefully this helps you along the way in developing your technical analysis and provides newfound confidence on your way to becoming a professional trader. Thank you all for your time, and have a great day.